Hello everyone! Today I thought we could try to measure the speed of sound. Most people are aware of the speed of light. It's the speed that electromagnetic waves, including visible light, travel through the air. Many people can tell you how fast light travels, which is very nearly 300 million meters per second. A lot of people also know that the speed of light is considered to be a physical constant and is represented by the letter C in Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared. It seems that fewer people know very much about the speed of sound, particularly how fast that speed is. Well, it turns out that the speed of sound is quite variable. This is a complex subject, but the speed that sound travels through air is dependent on many things, including temperature and atmospheric pressure. Sound can also travel through other mediums, such as water. Sound travels several times faster through water than through air, and this is one of the reasons that submarines use sound for navigation and ships use it for depth finding. This is called sonar. Anyway, we thought it might be fun to try measuring the speed of sound with some bits of kit we had lying around the house, and hopefully it'll help us learn a little bit more about how sound works. Firstly, we'll need some kind of sound source. In a laboratory, you would probably use a dedicated audio signal generator to do this, but for this experiment, we use this laptop. We found a web page that can generate a sine wave at a fixed frequency, and we've connected the headphone output to the oscilloscope and a little loudspeaker. So when we turn on the signal generator, we can hear the sound wave, and we can also see it on the scope. Now the oscilloscope is very important for what we want to do here, and I think it would be good to say a few things about what an oscilloscope is and what it does. Some of you will be familiar with oscilloscopes, maybe from a mad professor's lab or even from a school science lab. We tend to have a couple of them kicking around in our living room, you know, just in case. Last week, Electroboom made a video about oscilloscopes on his channel, which I'll put a link to in the description. He goes into a lot of detail without being too technical, and I highly recommend you watch this video if you want to find out more. All we have to worry about here is that an oscilloscope lets us see changes in voltage over time, which in this case lets us actually see the sound waves that we're playing with. If we change the level of the signal, or the frequency of the signal, we see a change in the display too. This oscilloscope lets us look at more than one signal at a time. So if we have our audio signal displayed on one of the traces, but plug a microphone into the second trace, we can see the phase difference between the sound coming out of the loudspeaker and sound being picked up by the microphone. What we need to do is move the microphone away from the speaker until the waveform on the trace from the microphone moves an entire wavelength from the other trace. Then, if we measure the distance between the speaker and the microphone, that gives us the wavelength of the audio signal we're hearing. In this case, the tape measure says 23 centimetres, so that's our wavelength. We know the frequency of the signal is 1.5 kilohertz because that's a frequency we selected on the signal generator. This is 1500 hertz. We now know the wavelength is 23 centimetres, which is 0.23 metres. If we multiply the frequency in hertz by the wavelength in meters, then that will give us the speed of the wave we are measuring in meters per second. Now normally, I would just punch these figures into a calculator, but I thought on this occasion it might be fun to calculate it using this slide rule. Many of you might not have seen a slide rule before, but they were what our grandparents' generation used to use before the invention of electronic calculators. I could do a whole series just on the subject of slide rules, but for now, let's just worry about the multiplication we need to do. We want to multiply 1500 by 0 0.23. The one thing you quickly get used to when you're calculating on a slide rule is constantly moving decimal places around and back again. If we consider that we're multiplying by 1.5, then we move the slide so that the number 1 on the C scale of the rule lines up with 1.5 on the D scale.
Now we can move the clear sliding part, which is called the cursor, to any number we like on the C scale, and we can read the result of the multiplication on the D scale. Here's an example. If we move the cursor to the number 2 on the C scale, we can see that the result of multiplying 1.5 by 2 is 3, as shown on the D scale. If we do our sound wavelength calculation in just the same way, we just move the cursor to 2.3 on the C scale, which corresponds to 3.45 on the D scale. If we move the decimal place two positions to the right, we get 345, which corresponds to 345 meters per second. The actual speed of sound at sea level and 20 degrees centigrade is 343.2 meters per second. So you can see that we're not actually very far off with our measurements. And we've done all the actual measuring with rulers. Anyway, I hope that's given you a bit more insight into what sound waves are and how they behave, but also how, using some relatively basic tools, we can learn more about the world around us and make fairly accurate measurements. Look forward to seeing you in the next video, and thanks for watching.